back to a brand new vlog. I do believe this is vlog number four and I'm really excited today because we are actually going to Australia Zoo and today is Steve Irwin Day. The reason it is Steve Irwin Day is because it was his favourite animal's birthday today and they actually have the same name as me. It was a tortoise called Harriet so I feel very privileged and blessed. I'm really really excited today because we haven't really seen like that many animals along the trip. I really want to see a kangaroo, I really want to see a koala, I'm just super excited. So the next few days we have the rest of Brisbane, we're only here for three days in total and then we go to Noosa. Noosa is supposed to be like a really good party destination and a really good place for us to meet people. We have met certain people along the way but on our last day and it's really annoying that we make friendships when we're just leaving. So hopefully we can meet a few more people as the days go along. We also have Katie and Owen over here. <laughs> so we have actually joined up with them. They're coming down whilst we're going up the east coast. That was really nice to see them. So we're going to the zoo together today and yeah I'll keep you updated. There'll probably be a lot of GoPro footage, montage footage and all of that. I hope you enjoy with me. Even the dog! Is that Staffy? Oh my god! I knew Staffy's were the best dog. There's just a koala there. So guys, Jasmine just actually just told me that it's the Wiggles putting their hands in concrete for the Australia Zoo Hall of Fame. Little Hall of Fame. I don't know why it's Hall of Fame though. It should be a flame. Concrete and flame. Flame? Yeah. Flame. <laughs> Do something, you boring little log. Crossy. Why don't you be a cop for a day? Imagine how they feel. People staring at them all the time. Justin Bieber. Where's the rest of its tail? Especially you. Oh my god. That's so cool. I want to touch it. I do. Dingoes. They're just like little buggies. Oh my god, they're like foxes. Oh my god, like a dog. Wow. They look like Shebas. Some people love them as pets. I can imagine. They're quite vicious, aren't they? Oh my god, it's huge. That is not it, surely. Yeah, it is. She said it was huge. Oh my god. No wonder she was freaking scared. Scared of it, yeah. It's like a dinosaur. So when we were in Byron Pier, me and Haz were actually speaking to the woman at the front desk. Oh, oh. oh my god, I want it to stand up. I want to see how big it actually gets. That's mad that that is a natural colour. Girl, what colour are you using a dye of her? <laughs> maybe she's born with it, maybe it's Maybelline. She's actually like Anna Beautiful. We just read that when the female, what they're called, cassowaries. When the female gives birth, the male then takes over. Basically, hatch the eggs, teach them everything they need to know. Which is really interesting. 60? 60 days. To hatch an egg. And then he trains them up, teaches them what they need to know. I think they are very beautiful, but I think if I saw one in the wild coming towards me, I would be a bit scared. Oh, God, yeah, if it stood up and started yeah. like, squaring up to you. Oh, God, that's like kangaroos, so I'm a bit nervous to see the kangas. Guys, me saying kangas just reminded me of the TV show, The Clangers. Please let me know if you've seen it. It was like the scariest thing ever. We actually saw one of these in Byron Bay the other day. And we thought it was a snake so we couldn't see the feet. It's actually a skink. I think that's so cute. That's adorable. Guys, look how big these snakes are. I think this is the one. It's just metal that they're real. I'd love to be able to like, talk to them. Harry Potter style. Does anyone speak parcel tongue? Ooh. Anyone speak parcel tongue? No. I wish I did. Damn. Guys, we found one. Oh my god, there's loads. Yeah, we actually. It's dinky. Look, look at the little baby. Can you see? Oh. Tiny. Yeah, it does really <laughs> <laughs> you're adorable, but you're stinky. Do you know what the smell is? Fun fact of the day: the males have a patch on their chest that attracts other koalas. What, like pheromone? Uh, yeah. Oh my attracts. god. So it's like a mating call. Oh my smell god, that's so scented. cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's oh, why you smell like one. Obviously, that's why you're so attracted to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I'm seeing a baby koala right now. It's so small. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. 
full stop that the commentary for this is some Aries. Oh, it's got an itch. Well, Sam said it could be Eastern Brownstone, that's where they are. But I think the one was thicker yeah. in the wild. It's most you know of the most of them scary. The most of them are scary. Why is it so pretty? I guess enjoying his life. What is it? Oh my god! That looks so Oh, that looks cute. That was like a huge guinea pig. That's what I said. Oh my goodness! What the cutie features! Oh my god! Please do crouch when you're talking to oh. When you're talking to us. <laughs> How cute is that? This is our rest area. Thanks for giving us some space. They look absolutely shattered. This is so mental, but you can basically just sit the kangaroos here. I think, and the wallabies as well. Katie, Jazz and Anna are just with one now, so I'll just show you that. Oh my god, my lord and saviour. She's got Gemma! Hey guys, just with our koalas, we ask that you would use when you're petting, just use the back of your hand or a nice soft open hand. It's not a scratch or a rub. And you're just working along here on the rope, okay? You're not coming up anywhere near the top of the side. It's just on the rope, okay? Today we just have a little treat of milk for Sally and Sage while they are doing their training. And this is a very good reinforcer for them. So as you can see, close to the windows there, Shane and Jen are able to run their hands all over the tiger's body just to check for any nicks or scratches that they may get. They still do play together and they can play quite rough. So if they do get any nicks, we will treat them straight away. And it does look like a trick, but it is actually a natural behavior that our tigers will use on a day-to-day -day basis. These girls at the moment are sitting around 85 kilos. Now this is just about fully grown for a female Sumatran tiger. They won't exceed 90 kilos. Oh my god, it is what I have in China. Just now. Guys, now you know I've to China. <laughs> so, we have just seen the tiger show. And usually, whenever I go to these sorts of things, I do question, like, the treatment of the animals and all of that. Like, I know some people get really funny with, like, zoos and stuff. But it was actually really, really interesting. The reason they have those two tigers is because they're Sumatran tigers. And apparently, like, they're really endangered because of poachers and stuff. They have this whole foundation set up where they have 60 rangers that go out and patrol and see if there's any poachers. And they basically try and arrest the criminals for it. So they're there as, like, preservation for that species of tiger because they did have Balinese tigers but they are sadly extinct now. So I really liked the fact that they spoke through that because I do always wonder about that sort of stuff. But now we are just sat in the cafe. It is absolutely massive. We are in the Crocoseum, I believe it's pronounced. So we're going to see a crocodile show in a bit. We've just gone to the Crikey Cafe. I've got a corn dog, which was called a Pluto Puck. I'm not actually Pluto. too sure why it was called that. And then also chip. And I've also got a caramel magnet. Everyone's trying to win prizes. 
prizes. Obviously, these two are ready. I know that voice. Bye, Mari. <laughs> Give yourself a big clap, everyone. It's good to see you again. He's going to do all of Steve's parts, and we'd love to hear that. So there's such a long history with you guys, with Dad, and uh, it's so wonderful to have you here and help us carry on such an important legacy. And, mate, look at the part in the car keys. Yeah. I love it. It's so good, flying the colours. Do you know what, everybody? Before we do this song, I would just want to say a big thank you to the Irwins and Steve uh, for being so wonderful to us and also to give it, giving us that great opportunity all those years ago to, to jam and do the weekly safari. Seeing Robert come on stage with us before, we all know that Australia Zoo's in great hands with the next generation. And so let's hear it for Terry, Robert and Mindy. <laughs> Steve was unbelievable. You, you've got to get that energy, which I think you've got. Yeah, that's not a good 
really, really was and is to this day. His legacy is alive and thriving, and we're all honoured to make sure it continues in the future. And you know, thank you for all turning up. There were a few people, and maybe a couple of us, that didn't make it. So we do have some messages on the oh, screen. Let's check it out. Happy Steve Irwin Day. And remember, as they say in Oz, to cocky it. Or as we say in America, khaki. It's not just a color, it's an attitude. Well, it's a color, but it's, a, it's an attitude. Happy Steve Irwin Day. Happy Steve Irwin Day from the Black Mamas. Happy Steve Irwin Day, all you fellas. Hope you have a great day. If ever there was a reason to have a national holiday, it's this one. Happy Steve Irwin Day. Happy Steve Irwin Day. Get your khaki on, it's Steve Irwin Day. Uh, so. Send our love to all the Irwins and uh, all the folks at the Australian Zoo. Steve was a great inspiration to us all. I just want to say thank you all very much for being here today uh, to celebrate the legacy and the memory of one of the greatest people to ever walk the planet, the amazing Steve Irwin. I think now more than ever with the state of the planet, the message and legacy that Steve left behind is really, really so just the fact that you guys are even there helps spreading the word and sharing that memory is a great thing for the planet and all of us who walk it and all the creatures and everything that are crawling around us. So it came out creepier than I expected. Anyway, uh, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Happy Steve Irwin Day. The debate is my job, my whole persona, my life revolves around that. So do my friends, family, colleagues, everyone I know is involved in conservation. And you know, I get this overwhelming feeling that I'm sharing my wildlife encounters with you. What a beautiful thing. I never really thought that was going to happen. A lot of people say, why? Why did you touch that snake? Why did you catch that goanna? If I can't get animals into people's hearts, there'll be no conservation. There'll be absolutely no love for our wild animals. And that would be devastating. Everything would just suffer and this would be a very ugly world. We need wilderness areas which are conserved by looking after, let's say, crocodiles to produce food and water and to have a very healthy green planet. And in essence, by conserving wildlife, I am helping humanity that's what I'd like to be remembered for. So what Robert's going to do is he's going to bring Murray out and demonstrate to you just how big and beautiful and dangerous Murray really is. So don't be fooled when you see him. This is power right here. Check it out. Robert, be careful. As Murray swims <laughs> through the water, you can appreciate the mighty Saurian approaches. It's extremely risky for me as well, as I am in the strike zone. Don't blink. Here he comes. Crikey. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Way to go. How is that? Now, we will get Murray out, the real Murray. He's we a will. special prop. He is. He's a special prop because you met him at a very young age. I did. I was a month old when I first met Murray. You may remember, I was about this big, about a loaf of bread size. Dad had me in one hand and, and fed a croc in the other. It wasn't controversial at all, was it? <laughs> and that was right there. And that crocodile was Murray. And today we're going to be feeding him, so it's going to be great. All right, what I'd like to do is show you just how much Murray really wanted to get your dad. Let's have a look. Let's take a look. out of his billabong. With slow motion and clear water, we can see oh how they God. launch themselves into the air from a standing start. Normally, crocodiles strike from muddy water, ambush predators who rely on speed and surprise. But in this special environment, you can actually see how they use their short, powerful legs oh and their God. tail to lunge forward for over half their body length. You've got to be moving or you'd be hit dead in your tracks. That's so cool. Oh, oh, Murray is one of the crocodiles that's been here the longest. He used to live in 
in the Crocodile and Mile Little Park in deep, dark, murky water. Now he lives here in the Crocosseum, and he loves nothing more than showing you how to be safe with crocodiles. So what Robert's demonstrating is what not to do. Do not stand too close to the water's edge. No. That is the danger zone. It but no, it's not a great idea, is it? No, no. Danger zone. Yeah. Oh so what your dad used to do at this point in the show is he'd just jump right into the crocodile. Let's do it. I Let's jump in with it. What do you reckon? No. What do you reckon? Let's jump in with it, man. Let's give it a go. Yeah. I'm 18 now, I'm going to do whatever I want. Oh. All right, now, as he comes out, you'll notice here, Murray doesn't break the surface. He doesn't make a ripple. It's all about camouflage for this guy. And I'll tell you what, he just loves it. He loves coming out here so much. He's just gorgeous. He's starting to put on the power. He's starting to get keen. He's real grumpy. You know what? Now that he's real grumpy, uh, he's all your fault. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Come on, Come on. Oh, my goodness. Come on. Come on. Robert, really bad. Yeah, Robert, he wants to go really bad. Come on, boy. Hey, Murray. Okay, good luck. Come on. Here we go. Now we're going to try and show you another strike here with Murray. You see there, once he gets back into the water, he's just poetry in motion. He is so switched on, so fast. He knows what he's doing. Thanks, mate. Now here, we're going to try and show you that ambush strike that a prop put on. He can hit that back fence there in one go. <laughs> He's a very intelligent crocodile. Murray is smart. He's really, really smart. So, what we're going to try and do here... There you go. Give it up for Murray. Hey, Murray. Hey, Murray. Hey, Murray. Hey, Murray. Hey, Murray. Hey, Murray. Good boy, Murray. That was beautiful. Oh. He's done that initial strike. Look at that. I can move backwards quicker than Murray can come forwards. No worries at all. And that's because he's not built for speed on land. You can hear that crunch. He loves a bit of KFC. Now that he's out on land, I can sit down in front of him and I'm in no danger. You know, I'll put my money where my mouth is. I can lay down in front of Murray. And um, I'm not going to stay here very long. But he, he really doesn't care. He could care less. If I start to approach his water, look at that. I don't even have to touch his water. He just knows that I'm going to start messing around in and around his territory and he just does not like it. Not one bit. He's a torpedo. He's not a greyhound. He's not a racehorse. You don't have to worry about crocodiles running you down on the highway. This right here is the danger zone. See that? He feels that little bit of vibration. That's what sets Murray off. So don't put yourself into that situation. Let's see if Robert can successfully get Murray's attention by infringing. Please don't panic. Don't worry about Robert. The water is heated. <laughs> it's very pleasant. It's about 30 degrees Celsius in there. Murray's pretty happy. He's like, woo, doggies, dinner and a show. This is great. Look, he's looking at him. Yep, there he is. So you'll notice that even though Steve built the Crocosseum with clear water, he acts just the same as he would in the wild. In the wild, they're in deep, dark, murky water, and that's what they use for camouflage. They stay underneath the water, and even if you're right next to the crocodile, you'd never know there was a croc just meters away from you because they remain the unseen predator. So that's why the biggest thing I can tell you is if you don't do what Robert does, you will never have a problem with a crocodile and you'll always be safe. Murray, are you gonna let everyone give you a big giant round of applause before you go? Wake up, Murray! Guys, that was such a surreal experience. Like, I'm so happy we came today. I actually can't even explain how incredible it was to see his son do exactly what he did. Oh, it's actually going to set me off again. If you can do it next year, definitely come. I highly recommend it. We actually didn't even plan this. This was like insane. I'm just speechless.
Really? Oh, where are the lemurs? If the lemurs are walking the playground, please give them some space. We can't find the lemurs. They're nowhere to be bloody seen. So, when we got on this bus, we turned the opposite way to the normal way that we turned into Australia Zoo. And I thought to myself, hmm. this is a bit fishy. But I thought it was going to turn around, or like maybe I was wrong because I usually am wrong about most things. Then you beautiful human over there said, guys, we're going the wrong way. So every single person on this bus has just been running back and forth, going from the station to the bus. We all got off in the middle of nowhere. We were actually heading towards Noosa. Which is where we're going in two days. So that is just so ridiculous. So that was an absolute mess. And um, we were tapping and tapping out for this train. But we are actually on the bus now. Thank Lord. It's going to be an hour until we actually get off the train. And then the train is another hour and 40. My actual life. And this one needs a piss. I need a wee too. Still got your pearls hanging by my bedside. Bye, Koala. Still got Bye, your lips and paper in the trash now. I never knew love could be so sweet. I never knew it would sting.